Warning, if you are faint of heart or easily offended, this show is not for you. My opinion. I mean, like, so I made the joke around some friends that I was, like, retiring from poker, and, like, Nick literally retired me from poker. He just <laughs> abused me in, like, 20 pots in a row, and I was like, fuck yeah. this, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, right. Yeah, yeah. and I'm so, <laughs> you know, generally speaking, when you're at a poker table with him, you're like, fuck, should I raise here? Because yeah. yeah. if I raise here, I probably have the best hand, but do I want to put the whole stack yeah. in? Also, every time, raise, like, yeah. my entire stack is just at risk on every exactly. street, right. every pot. Right. Like, how yeah. is this happening? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think there's an edge there, whether sure. it's ring or heads up, whatever. <laughs> All right, welcome to the Nick Fertucci Show. I am Nick Fertucci, and I am here with Brown Bala, Ishan, and Lynn. How are you doing, guys? So, Good. Yeah, how yeah. are you? Good. Well, you know, uh, we're here today. It's Saturday. What's today's date? The 8th. Yeah, Saturday yeah, the 8th. No we'll be putting this out Monday the 10th. And, um, you know, today we just wanted to kind of recap. You know, uh, Ishan, you've been down on the ground there in this heads-up match, and We've heard so many things about it uh, from a lot of different people, even the other camp. Okay. And uh, we thought we would just go over some details and some facts and just have a good time and, and do some chatting. Yeah, sounds good. I can fill everyone in on, on everything that's going on. Cool. And by the way, guys, this is Chloe. Uh, she came today and uh, wouldn't get off the table, so we put a blanket down, and now she's posting up. So, Chloe, say hi. Good job. All right. <laughs> So, uh, okay, so how about this? Let's start out like just something real uh, macro. What's it like being down on the floor there? I know you're not allowed to sit, but but you're yeah. still around, right? And yeah. you're, you're, you're privy to a lot of the things going on. You take it wherever you want to take it, and then Lynn and I probably will pelt you with a million questions. Yeah, sounds good. So um, basically, like Nick wanted me to be there uh, over the weekend just for like emotional support, make sure he doesn't get tilted. <laughs> emotional so, support, human. <laughs> yeah, Here's emotional, emotional support, support dog. human. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he let you into the casino. He has but, a permit. Yeah, he had to show them the forms. Be like, I got this guy that's at good, the hospital that's good. across the that's street. Good. Like everyone else, it's bullshit, but you got it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so uh, I was playing like just like some game on the floor uh, while Nick and Berkey were playing. Um, I was there with my girlfriend and Sashimi was there too. And um, Mars they, was there maybe? Mars was there on and off a little bit. Um, and so like in the room, it's like pretty tense. Like uh, no one, they don't, they don't talk to each other at all. I've heard from both sides that Whoa. neither of them really likes being around each other. And so <laughs> that sounds so hard to be around like i don't play games yeah. where i don't like like even one or two people much less the only other person that i'm playing Lynn, with i'm the same i would yeah. not even if you guaranteed me that i would win a million i could not sit in front of matt berkey for fight for 20 million hours. So, okay yeah. well, or, because you're rich <laughs> okay yeah. i don't know about that but even, i don't know probably but man i'm like you i don't want to play in any ring games with people yeah. i don't like like, yeah, yeah. I mean, Berkey thinks that, at least from what he said on his podcast, that like th his edge is bigger the earlier on because he thinks that because Nick has such a strong team, like with Doug, like he'll improve quite quickly. And so you said that Nick has like a really strong team with Doug and whatnot. But I'm over here and I'm watching Doug put out videos every other day. I can't <laughs> imagine Doug's working that much with Nick. Yeah, that's true. Doug has not had that much availability. For coaching, um, it's been like a few one-hour calls uh, here and there right now. Um, but like we're trying to get like other coaches for him. And, and I think overall we still have a pretty strong team. Okay, so like you guys are building others. out a strong team. But yeah. maybe we're not there quite yet. Yep. Here's what here's what, what I am befuddled by. And it's, it's just like these guys decided within two or three weeks to play heads up. Nick called them out, all that, back and forth, whatever. Yeah. Who cares? If somebody is, is, is studying like like Matt can do it. Matt can in his free time instead yeah. of spending all his time on the podcast with his five buddies. Yeah. He could he could and he could be doing it. And I'm not saying he is because we all know, you know, Matt would say it because he's very up and up on his integrity. But um, but what who, who cares? Like, yeah, 
So well, since Nick Erdl yeah. has never played heads up in his since life. Since when are people not allowed to study? This is like the most absurd in the thing in the yeah, world. Yeah, that's so the like, one thing that I just like. I I said this on my other yeah. podcast, and I'm going to say it here again because I probably won't say a lot of great things about Matt because I'm kind of I'm kind of done with some of the things that have been going on, and I've been very passive aggressive and just kind of holding back and whatever. But this guy takes every chance he can to hit whoever he feels like hitting if he doesn't like him. He's done that to me recently. But I will say this because I want to be fair and I want people to believe my words if it's they're not positive. I don't think Matt's a scammer because he was oh, called a scammer. Sure. I agree with that. Matt was called a fraud. I don't necessarily think he's a fraud. What I think is is that, you know, uh, he's in, and they were referring to his, his academy. You know, he has the right to run any business he wants at whatever profit level or non-profit level he wants. <laughs> and uh, if it's a passion project, if nobody's getting paid, who cares? That's, you know, because listen, there's a one, two, one, three player out that are, are getting some good things from there and right. learning ranges and learning sizing. There's something for everybody. So, you know, right? So Completely. you can't yeah. call the man a scammer and you can't call him a fraud. You could just maybe call him a, not a great businessman. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. That's, that's it. Yeah. And that would be fair. And that still would be an opinion. Right. That, yeah. that is that yeah. is still an opinion. Yeah. Um, so Matt and I were, were pretty close for, for a while there. Mm-hmm. And I'll go as far as to say that, like, I don't actually think he's not like a particularly malicious or vindictive person, but he is petty. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the biggest differences that I had with him is for me, like when it comes to people I care about and also when it comes to business, I don't let pettiness get in the way of like me making money. Um, right. And I think he's much more comfortable with that. I don't think he's actively thinking about like, oh, like what lies can I make up so that like, n- no. like Nick Vertucci or the hustler look worse. No. It's just, I don't think he, he thinks about situations that like completely and he doesn't oftentimes look at like the other side or question his own like beliefs and assumptions. So what he says at the very least is just relatively thoughtless. It's yeah. not mean, yeah. like, or he doesn't mean it to be mean. It, it probably yeah. does end up. He, be- you know, yeah, it ends up being that way because right. I don't think he has that chip to understand his delivery sometimes, and sometimes you're not always right. I think he chooses not to okay. use that chip. I think he, <laughs> okay, he can't well then have that's it, pompous. But- yeah, that's a very pompous mm. uh, trait. If that's the case, I, know, I wouldn't yeah. know because I don't know him as well, and. Uh, I do believe that most of the time he believes in what he's saying and yeah. and can't be moved off of his thought or his fact uh, if he if he thinks it's a fact and um, I don't know. That's I'm gonna just... push back again. I, I think he can be moved, but I don't think people around him are pushing him. Very good. Point. I've seen this happen with a lot of like, and I'm going to say men because it largely is men around me where they achieve like any level of success and the people they are largely surrounded by are people that are on their payroll or like people who look up to them. Yes, yes. So now it's an echo chamber. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it's, and that happens well, when, but you said successful people. So I don't know, but I do know that. No, I'm being serious. I mean, let's define it event at down the road because we're going to talk about that. I mean, Matt's more successful than the average American. Okay, fair. That is fair, but not <laughs> he's not as successful as some of the people he's bashing about being average. He's also probably not someone we would consider successful in our circles, but uh, we right. are also very, very, very privileged. I mean, how, Glenn, how do you, and I want to go back to something you said in a minute, but how do you get on a microphone and out of the blue just decide to call somebody average? What? Melissa. Sorry, <laughs> Melissa, <laughs> Melissa did just put something pretty I mean, interesting. Hey, she, she donated. It's a super chat. It is yeah. super chat. I'll read it out. I'll oh, read go it out. ahead. We can discuss it tomorrow too. So Melissa just donated dollar ninety nine. Thank you, Melissa, for super chat. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the lights on, baby. Yeah, Berkey, fuck, Mary, kill, Airball, Rick, <laughs> Doug, or Nick Vertucci. Man, that is so tough. <laughs> Uh, they, thank you for I, your. Uh, I already person. know who he's gonna marry. The the, the the do you? Cause I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Do. The difficulty is that like uh I like it's all so hard. I mean, I you, think, you should marry. I think, a, I think Doug ball. is the no. No, because he has the most money, right? No, but we Doug know. seems oh, like he'd know. be a good spouse. Think, yeah. Yeah, he seems responsible and who well, Doug. It's not, Doug yeah. it's not who you want to love the most. It's who you want to torture the most in these mm-hmm. cases, right? Well, well I, mean, I don't know. Mary. I mean, with Mary, you're you're stuck for life. Yeah. Are yeah, you? but you could, you know, I've seen happening. some pretty abusive. I mean, you've seen. Uh, never mind. Asian couples are very abusive. I don't know, man. Nick made a mint on that fucking real estate thing. He might be he might be caked up. Nick? Yeah. Oh, he's caked up for sure. I, actually I think I would marry Vertucci. 
I would enjoy what? fighting with him forever. I, I think. actually think that is the play. Yeah. Yeah. Because right? you would, yeah, you yeah. would fight like an old married couple. <clears throat> yeah. And also, like, he's not my intellectual equal. So, like, it would just be me <laughs> dunking on him the entire time. <laughs> Come on. Oh, I'm just saying. Man. Nick and Doug are very intelligent God. people. Damn. Like, Nick is pretty average. It's, uh, sorry. Nick Airball and Doug are very intelligent people. And somehow he, he makes money. So you could just have him go out of the That's house and do stuff. And That's what I mean. That's what I mean. You're just a house husband. Yeah. It's yeah, fine, yeah. bro. Yeah. I think, I think that would be. I think I would marry See, Bertucci. This is the play. Yeah, I think I would marry Bertucci. And All then, right. We yeah. got that you don't know. That's me, by the way. I'm. He's called me average. And so we want to lean <laughs> into that. Uh, oh, that's way too tight. Well, you, you do that when you are very comfortable stating your opinions on things without thinking them without through. Without thinking them through, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and so, you know, to me, I just like, yeah, I, I don't understand that. And... Um, and we can talk about it in a minute, and, and, and I have to be really, really careful with that conversation because I, I'm to the point now where I want to push back. I, yeah. I have messed this thing up. I have put one foot in and one foot out, and I kind of say things, and I kind of retract them, and I don't want beef, yeah. and then I try to make it okay. And you know what? Listen, here's the deal. I've reached out to this dude a couple times just to oh. say, you don't like me, I don't like you. But let's just stop. And it didn't happen. And, you know, I'm sitting the other day and I get five people send me a clip of I'm minding my own business and he, and he, and he, you know, he hits you. And it's just like, what are you doing, dude? Like, you know, what are you, are you, do you really think like you're that superior than everyone else? And I just, you know. I think the crazy part is, is I, I think he actually does. So does something what? that I think he actually thinks very highly of himself. Of, you, of course. Um, and, the reason that's a little bit surprising to me is because oftentimes I feel like in order to feel that way, you need to have a pretty good track record. And I'm not sure his is up to par. I will say credit where it's due. Like, I think he came from like a tough background, a tough totally. environment. But I also think potentially that could be said from a, for a lot of people. Like, yeah, I don't know yeah. where you came from. I don't know if you were born with a well, silver spoon in your mouth. We, okay, so right. let's talk about that. And sure. and, and yeah. so this is this is the exact quote. I, they were playing, uh, Melissa on the podcast sent a message in and they were playing fight, uh, fuck, Mary, fuck, kill. fuck, Mary, Mary kill. kill. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so eventually they got to the point where he said he would marry me and he would marry me because he would want to torture me my whole life because I am not his. I'm sorry. Who said this? Matt Berkey. Wow. Okay. Maybe I should rescind what I said about him not being malicious. <laughs> you didn't know this? <laughs> uh, I didn't realize that he said it because that it was because he wanted to Okay. Okay. So, wow. So they're doing a podcast talking about Nick, and he's being defensive the whole time, saying he's not a scammer. That was like his every like twenty minutes that would come up because it really bothered him. And I and I understand that because I've been called that too, and I'm not. And that's why I defend Matt on that. But when they had the game, he finally said he would marry me, so he could argue with me every day. And I don't know if he used the word torture, but something because I'm not his intellectual equal. And what are we talking about? Are we talking about an SAT test? Are we talking about a chemistry test? Are we talking about life? Because like if we're, life, <laughs> if we're talking about life, if we're talking about life, I've owned and ran like four businesses since I was 21 years old. I'm retired. I know I could 10 or 20 X him with what they call, they were saying that Nick probably is caked up. I'm, I, I, I have no doubt. And that's so douchey. I know that. And I, and I, you know, I'm a t-shirt hat guy. I don't ever talk about that shit, but I've had, like, I just, I just have kind of had enough. Like if you're going to say something, be something. Yeah. So Nick, that's like kind of the crazy part. And I was actually listening to a podcast earlier. Um, it's Lex Friedman and Ayla. It's really interesting. Very different from this. Highly recommend you guys give it to a listen. But what they were talking about there is that like often a lot of people are fooled by conviction confidence mm -hmm. big words and just like the overall appearance of intelligence without right. actually considering like if there's execution and action to back it up right um, it's mm -hmm. an opinion that you that you really make of yourself it's like when i used to teach students i'd be in front of like 500 students teaching real estate but one of the things that i would always tell them because really success in life does not derive from your iq it derives from some of your iq and it can be you want to you know you're sure. a chemist you right. invent something sure but it comes from drive it comes from grind it comes from being able to fail and pick yourself up and so you know i used to tell them i said you know your 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 attitude not your aptitude is going to you know, uh, dictate your altitude, right? I mean, it's just like the way it is. Yeah. And maybe that's some of the reason why some people, and I told them, I said, listen, you guys who think you're the smartest in the room and yeah. you don't want to listen or learn from anybody and you're always right, 
like you may go on Jeopardy and win and you'll get paid. But other than that, you're not going to turn that intelligence into dollars. I learned that the hard way. You're not going to turn it into dollars. What you turn into dollars is so many different things and it doesn't come from just that. So it's just such a pompous stand to take when you do not have a really successful business. Because I don't know what we're talking about when we're talking about intelligence. Is it business? Is it life? Because we can we can yeah, talk about that. I think defining that. it is is important. Um, and I really 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 liked it. Like like what you said about like aptitude versus attitude. Because mm-hmm. I, I think especially when I was younger, I actually got a lot of flack from both teachers and other students for not applying myself. And I always just assume like, oh, I'm smart. I can skate through life. Yeah. Um. I I've definitely like learned that the hard way. Where it's like, when when intelligence. Or when brains like doesn't work hard, hard work beats intelligence. There you go. Um, yeah. And you know, you talked about, you know, Matt having a hard background. And you know, I get that. He he yeah. recently went on a pod and said, you know, he's from uh, Pennsylvania. Where yeah. is it? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Pittsburgh. He, yeah. Pittsburgh. And he, you know, grew up in a gang area or whatever. Like, I get it. But guess what, man? You know, uh, you know, my dad died when I was 10. Yeah. Okay. My mom went on a total, this is so ironic, a total... She was like a number one real estate agent, but she was so tilted that she used to play cards low ball at the Rainbow Bow Club in Gardena. So ironic. Mm-hmm. And literally went on like a three or four year tilt and almost lost everything we had. Yeah. I used to come home with a string with one key around my neck because I was just 10, 11, 12, 13. So, you know, I don't want to lose that shit so I can get in. And so whatever about your background, I don't care if you come from a silver spoon or you For come sure. from the streets. Don't yeah. be a dick. The other thing Don't is, treat yeah. people yeah. that you think are below you a certain way. Like he's surrounded yeah. by these yes men and and everything he says they agree with. Now I will say the one guy I don't want to say anything about is Landon. He was nice to me at the GPI awards. I think he has a good soul. That's my read, but he's part of that group and so he defends and I get it. Uh, Brian Lamana, I don't think has had an original thought since he was two and he stopped crapping his pants, right? That's <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But, it, it, oh, you know what? I, I'm going to take that back or take that out because that's not fair. But, but all he does fine. is yes man him, right? And yeah. um, and then there's Conrad. Uh, <laughs> Come on. Yeah, uh, we talked a little bit about this beforehand. Like, I, I can appreciate Conrad for who he is as a human being, but him and I, like, we just have our differences. And I value being able to develop like genuine connections with everyone, but also diversity of thought more than I value. Like my therapist was telling me about there's people that are fusionists where if you don't believe in the same things as they believe in, like you guys just can't really have communication or relationship. And Conrad Mm. strikes me as one of those people. Granted, I might be wrong, but it seems like from both your experiences and my experiences. Well, my experience is like the only experience I have is that because Matt and I don't care for each other, he he doesn't like me. And when we're at the GPI awards, you know, I like almost bumped right into him and I said, hey, like, why don't we all just bury this fucking hatchet? And I put my hand out and he's like, fuck you. And he walked away. I'm like, all right, I get it. That's just how it is. And then I tell Feldman and Feldman like an hour later goes up and goes, I know you're not good with Nick, which I wanted to slap him because why would you do that when someone did that? But that's just him. And he goes up and Conrad goes, no, no, thanks. You know what has Ryan done to him? Right. So what's fascinating to me is that oftentimes the people who have fuck you money aren't the ones saying fuck you to people. Yeah. Um, Because yeah, because Lynn, I was going to say this hmm. guy's probably buying in a $500 tournament and selling action. Yeah, that's just my that's just my take. I'd guess he's better <laughs> off than that, but maybe not by much. Yeah, but what I'm yeah. saying is, it's like, I don't know, I don't know what I'm saying. I, it's I just think, so tilting well, that these I'll guys are I'm so saying. aggressive. It's just that when you have this approach towards life, and when you aren't interested in what other people have to say or yeah. getting over your differences, um, especially for the sake of business, I think that is negatively correlated with success yeah i think the fact that you're open-minded and that you're like fine with people pushing back um and also that you like plan ahead and you don't say things that can get you in like like hot water a ton like you're fiery but you you do like I, i think you understand what you can and can't say like that's really important like it's not an accident that matt is getting put on blast all the time and What's really interesting to me is like someone that's been like good friends with him in the past is that it feels like he's just chosen to like be stagnant. It it seems like he's Mm. he's decided that's who he is. Well, when you talk, sorry, when you talk about when you talk about uh, like 
no one to push back. Like you guys all know that I, uh, my co-host is usually Veronica. Veronica and I don't see eye to eye on anything. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like literally anything. Yeah. The only thing about Veronica is I love her yeah. because I just do, and and she's really talented on the mic. But her and I fight like cats and dogs, and she pushes back almost so much that I want to just knock her on her ass sometimes because it's like, dude, like, can you like at least fucking be on my side once? But 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 I keep having her on because yeah. I respect people because I have always been a little bit like I've always been the CEO, the boss, and everyone's always kissed my ass. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I don't like that because I can't have a real relationship with you. I've recently become friends with MJ Gonzalez, like really good friends, right? Mm. That dude will tell me the truth, yeah. you yes. know? And so now I feel like I'm talking to a peer. Right. And I want him, and he's told me so many times, dude, he's probably, for sure when, it, when I get done with this, I'll talk to him and he goes, oh, you, you know, you shouldn't have done that. You're making him relevant. Yeah, you're probably right, but fuck <laughs> it. Because, because, because the truth yeah. is, is I've been sitting on my hands half-assing it, and I am done. I'm leaning into this right. now. I just like, I think what you said is so like important where I, I try really hard to make sure that people always feel good when they give me feedback, especially feedback that they don't necessarily think I want to hear because that is so goddamn valuable to me. Yeah. And we don't always like it. No, yeah. it stings. It yeah, often it stings. stings initially, but then the next day it's like, oh, like, great. Like, I can now take this feedback and I can do something with it. I can choose to improve. Yeah. Like, deep yeah. down, I still like Matt and I would love that for him. Um, but mm -hmm. also, you can't, I can't want things for someone more than they want it for themselves. And I'll say it again. If he shuts the fuck up about me <laughs> and I don't get another clip sent to me about him bashing me or anything about me, I will never say another word about him. Yeah. That I, I will right. I will book that right now. You have enough but going I am on in done your life. absorbing yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But like as like a man with like a very like happy, beautiful family and multiple businesses, like you just have enough on your plate that if you don't need to think about Matt Burke, you're not going to sit around thinking about him. Yeah, but yeah, it's true. His and podcast. If he never talked about life. him again, I would never think of him again. I'm not, right, I don't watch exactly. his podcast. Yeah. I get sent clips Me too. from these people I like, oh, dude, he's at it again at you. And I'm like, I didn't even do anything. This is between him, Doug, and Airball. Why the fuck am I in this? You know? Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, I, I'd be, I would love to never hear from him again, but they just, between him and, and his minions, I, I can't, I can't get around it. Yeah, yeah, can, yeah. I, can I just say a few things? Yeah, sorry. Kind of <laughs> me and Winter no, no, fucking. You guys me are and, good. Hey, dude. Oh, hey, hey. Thanks for being here. When did you get here? When did you get here, I'm bro? I'm just here to sit here and look pretty. <laughs> I mean, you have all the information and gossip girls here. Going, okay, go ahead. No, no. I mean, I think that you guys are spot on with a lot of what you're saying. I also think one thing that's really interesting is, like, in the industry that we're choosing to be a part of, like, poker, I think that, like, one of the most important attributes that someone can have to be successful is like how willing they are to be wrong and like yeah a lot of the the people like give Berkey shit because like he's been in poker for 20 years and like blah blah he's like not winning that much like mm -hmm. i think that like it it just goes hand in hand with like how he is as a person like because if you just like make a play and you think it's always right and you're never open to thinking it's wrong and everyone else is just telling you it's right, then you'll never learn. You'll never become better. Like you'll always just think like, well, I just had to do that because like that's what if you're that's that good. good and you're training people and you've been professed professional for 20 years in this industry. Like when he says it, he perks up. Where's yeah. the cake? <laughs> yeah. Where's the cake? Yeah. yeah I mean, okay. Everyone that I know who is like really brilliant who's been in poker for even just like 10 years they're out of poker and that's because like they're resting on their laurels now they've they, they've made their money and they're done um mm. it, i don't i don't imagine that was ever an option for matt um mm. so yeah if you're if you're having a training site it's it's oftentimes not because you are the most selfless altruistic human it's often because you'd like that to be a source of revenue it's an ego project Maybe, yeah, that's, that's possible. That's, that's, my, sure. that's my take. Since yeah. he has a lot of takes, that's my take. But, you know, whatever. But that's cool because everyone should do what they want to do. But don't be a dick. Right. And something I really yeah. like about kind of everything you're saying is that I think you're really good at qualifying things as your opinion. Um, Matt, if you're somehow watching this, I would love to see <laughs> you do that just a little bit more often. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I get it. And, um, and, and to your other point, dude, 
I'm wrong more than I'm right. Me too. Okay? Yeah. I'm wrong Crazy more than I'm right. Is. Dude, I, I say is. things that have gotten me in so much fucking yeah. hot water. I, 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 but, but, but here's the thing. Yeah. But when I'm wrong, I will say I'm wrong. But people always yeah. think like, oh, well, you know, you're just walking it back. You're just trying to say, no, fuck, I was wrong. I yeah. shouldn't. Guess what? I shouldn't have blasted Dickhead on the internet about him uh, secretly and illegally recording one of my employees. I shouldn't have done that, right? And yeah. I and I tried to make it right, and and I couldn't, and it came across as passive aggressive and wishy washy. I'm yeah. fucking done with that. Yeah, like yeah. whatever. Yeah. Sorry about that, Matt. My bad, but it was illegal. Yeah, you know, I'm just well. saying, right? <laughs> sorry, not sorry. sorry. No, not sorry. I, I'm sorry. I should have. I'm just, sorry about my. Action. I should have just let whatever happened happen because <laughs> yeah. Kyle, you know, wanted to go after him. Um, so many other things, and so I just. Uh, you know, I I, sh I just should have let it be. And you know what the most tilting thing is? Is that when this all happened with Jack Four and he got onto his perch and had more air in his sails than ever because of us, mm -hmm. I offered him, Doug Polk, and Joey Ingram to come down. And, I, and, and not only to see everything, but if they wanted to shadow the investigation, so there was a third party that did not have my, like my back, I offered that to all of them. None of them right. took me took me up on that, okay? And Matt even went so far as to saying that it was bullshit and reckless to have Doug in our podcast room. Give me a break. We were in there 10 minutes and we all sat in chairs in the middle of the room and together. And it's like you if you just want to find things to try to keep saying how lack of uh, whatever intention and integrity then you can. But, you know, th there's a gentleman that was getting coaching by his um, his other let me see the name. And this this stuff is just relevant now at this point. Um, there's a guy, I won't say his name, that emailed Matt Berkey. He was working with me. Um, he emailed Matt Berkey about like, hey, you're talking, like you're saying a lot. You know a lot about RFID. Like, talk to me about it. Come talk to Nick. Like, let's get your inputs. This was like really early on. Right. And he faded him. And then he said he didn't get the message. But the truth is, is that his... Uh, um, his uh, trainer, Matt Hunt, Matt, Matt, <laughs> Matt, Matt Hunt, Matt Hunt, boy, I'm sure. <laughs> Oh, you can't make what a rough up. childhood this dude must have had, seriously. <laughs> I mean, if his name was Mike Hunt, it's over, right? At least it's Matt. Yeah, <laughs> Talk to Berkey about it, and Berkey said he'd be getting back to him. So if you have a real interest in making things better, come to the tussler right <laughs> respond to that guy like don't legally but take nick, someone nick please like <laughs> i'm sure we all see it for what it is and yeah. him and i were on better terms at this point obviously they're doing it for the views like right he doesn't mm -hmm. actually like right I maybe agree. he maybe he even is like maybe he believes it himself so that he I'm like yelling. I know <laughs> <laughs> like it's possible that Matt even believes that he like really cares about the investigation and the truth right but deep down I think by making a lot of content around it one yeah. his content does better I think they did at least 50% better if not significantly more than their average when he views. was doing this and fighting yeah. with us he had like quadruple people watching right so mm -hmm. first off it's that and then secondly like i think his ego probably gets the feeling of importance by being a respected member of the community that gets to like weigh in and give his input does he really care about like the investigation like maybe <laughs> but in so far as much as like it benefits his content my opinion that's in my, my opinion in my opinion <laughs> I believe there's some care for that, but I believe it is more for him being relevant in yeah. the poker industry and being a name than it is some of the things he's actually saying. And I know that being average, I know that yeah. because I'm a people person, I pick up on things and that's that's my opinion, of course. Poker poker seems like that's like most of what he has in his life. Yeah. Um, and once again, that's just a guess. But yeah. um, last I checked, unmarried, no kids. Um, and yeah. So it makes sense why being irrelevant in poker really matters to him. I wonder if it would be hard being in a personal relationship with him with some of these tendencies. <laughs> Do you have anything to say about that, Lynn? Do you have anything you want to talk about? Fair if I were to heat. speculate, I would guess that being in a personal relationship with someone who often has a tendency to be petty and say things with a high degree of conviction that they're that is like factually inaccurate could potentially be a little bit rough 
but yeah. that's just me speculating. Yeah, and and, and of Reasonable. course, speculation, of course, in your opinion. Um, but and think about petty about a business decision, sticking to your pettiness. The number one poker stream in the world who ha that has the juiciest lineups. You have banned yourself basically from because of your ways real sharp like when he went on the other day i will never play at hustler i will never play at uh, lodge i don't know about the lodge but you will never fucking play at the hustler right well like, and yeah. how i mean and he's a poker player these are the dream spots he's played already and won right. finally won once on our stream and made a ton of money like right. why would you ruin that for sure yeah like in yeah. theory or like hypothetically yeah i can't imagine like dating someone who just actively shoots himself in the foot um, yeah. That to me seems like just simply bad business practice. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Do you think yeah, about dating Matt Berkey? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think about dating him, but I think everyone, everyone at some level has these like things where like yeah. they think that they're right, and then it causes them to like do things that like hurts relationships or like hurts other things. And I think like part of it is just like growing up and like you learn your own tendencies and those like aspects better and then like you don't do them and and like it's harder for some people and easier for others i mean some people get more stuck in their ways i think yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and uh you know i know we're on one and like i said i just want to reiterate <laughs> i don't think matt's a scammer i don't think he's a fraud i don't yeah. think he lacks yeah. integrity i don't think he's a bad person i will say this i definitely do not think he lacks integrity oh i i he, yeah. he has more integrity than i do I would also say because he has stand, also more integrity than I do. Yeah, I, agree. I, 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 yeah. I, and I, I'll sell out and for I think I have a lot. Yeah. I, I, I <laughs> can I see that he would stand on that. I, yeah. I, I actually see that. So if he ever needs anyone to defend him about that, I'd be the first one to do it Me because yeah. you know why? It's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. For so sure. let's say, let's say the truth. Let's not just, you know, a lot of people when they hate somebody or don't like somebody, they'll just say things about them or their character that is just not true. Yeah. And I, it's not fair. Yeah. It's not fair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, holy shit. All right, so what else, man? Uh, <laughs> I have some more questions. Do, do they talk? <laughs> yeah. Do they needle? Um, What's with uh, all the breaks? Is what anyone flipped doing? anyone so, off? <laughs> so, so I've heard from both sides that, like, Nick said that there was a couple times when, like, Berkey, like, fake folded or, like, tried to, like, get some reads in, like, the big pots. <laughs> and, and Nick said that none of that happened. Uh, Berkey said that, like, Nick slow rolled him a few times. Wait, who said? So Nick said that happened. Berkey said it didn't? No, no, Berkey said, I mean, I don't think Berkey verified or denied that oh, one. Oh, but, but Nick said it happened. Or did yeah, not. Okay. and then Berkey said that, like, Nick slow rolled him a few times. Do we think that's okay, by the way? Like, do we think, like, angling and, like, fake folding or, like, like fake pumping? I Is mean, that... I think it's in bad taste. Yeah, yeah. so Probably. it's not cheating, but it's yeah. angling. And if that, and I'm not saying Matt did that. I wasn't there. Right. But if too. anyone does that, that's an angle. And that's just someone that eventually you don't want to play with because right. they're always looking to get an edge and it's right. not illegal, but it's immoral. Yeah. Yeah. And sure. so, and then the, what was the other question that you guys asked? Oh, um, breaks. Yeah, yeah. What's with that? So, I mean, specifically, these were just times like that Nick like needed space so that he could like keep his mental game like a hundred. Like wh when he was going on breaks, he literally like messaged like our group chat and was like, yeah, I've been taking breaks because like I didn't need to like I just want to clear my head and keep being able to play my and A game. Do we think like that's okay? No, ten really? breaks is I a don't. bit excessive. No, I Why? think it's excessive. Really? Ten, yeah. I think if ten I'm being is fair, excessive. I think it's excessive. I think listen, yeah. you don't challenge someone to a heads up match and then get up every 10, 15, 20 minutes to go take. He's a not getting up every 10, 15, 20 minutes. Many, He's getting up at like it sounds uh, like at most like once every half hour, probably yeah. once well, an hour. Okay, but it's yeah. not it's not that off. And yeah. and what I would say is. Now, I think this is my personal opinion. Yeah. I just don't think that he should take that many breaks. Now, if he's if he needs to clear his head, if he needs to whatever or get some advice, I don't have things. But these are like smoke breaks, Nick. Yeah. What's that? Like if he was a smoker and like he was addicted to nicotine and he just needed to get up to smoke every like half an hour. I think like I know, we, but it's just like even if you come okay. play our stream sure. and you're a smoker or yeah. like there's a couple guys that like don't play because they smoke cigars and they want to like take long breaks. They can't play. Because okay. it's yeah. a show. Now, I know okay. they're not on stream and it's it's not a show, yeah. but there is an obligation to Matt. Okay. I, I agree that I think probably every 30 yeah. minutes is excessive. Maybe like like every two hours I think is definitely okay. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 And you then maybe every hour. stretch your legs. Uh, right. Yeah. Of course. 
Okay. So, but excessively is just it's just so tilting. Yeah, I think that they had a ruling on this recently. I saw Landon tweeted about it. It was like they're <laughs> his, gonna have his like, tweet. I actually <laughs> thought he was being serious. I'm like Landon, what's your problem? Because they're memes. Like the, I'm like okay, sorry. Like I get it because you know whatever. He's yeah. funny. They were funny. Well, I think this one was serious because the tweet, memes were funny. Yeah, the memes were funny. The I'm old. Ur- I didn't know what it meant. One, I thought it- <laughs> the urinal one where like I'm standing at a urinal and then like yeah. it comes over and he's like, so I had King Seven suited. That one was dang. Yeah. Yeah. That one was dead. And who cares if you or his friend are in the can talking about hands? Who yeah, cares? Yeah, this yeah. is what everyone that one, does. That yeah. one was, that yeah. one this was is dang. what we do. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, yeah, th- I think they have a new ruling where now they are allowed uh, 20 minutes total break time every se- every session. And it has to be a minimum of four minutes per break. Okay. So they're basically allowed That's five cool. four-minute breaks. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, five Drink less breaks. water, Nick. Yeah. I don't know. Five you know, drink less green tea is, is reasonable. You get like yeah. basically a little uh, less than one an hour, and it's like five minutes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have a question for you, Ishan. Yeah. So it seems like you and Nick are, are very close. Um, did you think Nick was a favorite going into this for that first weekend? Um, so like, I've played a lot with both of them actually, and like just from Ring, I think that Nick's style wins more money, and it's like a, a more profitable wins more money style. in Ring or heads up. Um, just from like my perspectives on ring, but like a lot of it trans translates, I think to heads up because heads up is just like ring, but like you have to play every single hand. And Mm -hmm. so like, it's just you and the other person and like whoever's like more aggressive is like going to have an edge Mm -hmm. generally. Yeah. And to expound on that, it's like this, let's go ahead and give Matt the edge because he studied, he's, you know, whatever, right. Been in 20 years. I, I could I could get behind. I don't, how do I know who's better? Can people say this one's better? That one's better? How do you really know? But I would it's assume by just the reality of this thing that Matt should yeah. be the favorite, right? Yeah. But I think anything can happen in a heads up match. Number one and number two is if Nick, what I know about him, regardless of where he got his money, I don't know anything. But all I know is when he puts that money on the table. He's ready to go. Yeah. And when you play power poker like that and you <laughs> don't give a fuck, yeah. it you have an edge against somebody that maybe has, you know, sold some action or maybe is Wait, are like, you saying Berkey sold some action? I'm just saying. Or, <laughs> no. or I don't know. Or if... Wait, he's like, not worth $10 million? Or, <laughs> Sorry. or if... I, I mean, he said himself he's not worth maybe... what uh, I don't know, so whatever. I, mean, he, I think, yeah, he might have said he's not worth five, which, wow. Yeah, so I could, it's under there. Imagine. Whatever. I, I don't know. All I know is, but like if you're playing to lose maybe a million dollars or more, you have... Maybe, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's just been around so long and he's loose. But I don't care what anyone says. If if someone's short on their bankroll or they're not as deep as someone else, the person that's willing to put it in your face has the edge. I For don't sure. give a shit if the yeah. other person knows more about poker. Yeah. Yeah. That's my opinion. I mean, like, so I made the joke around some friends that I was like retiring from poker and like Nick literally retired me from poker. He just <laughs> abused me in like 20 pots in a row. And I was like, fuck yeah. this. I'm not doing this. Yeah. Anymore. <laughs> no, I, right. Yeah. yeah. And I'm so, <laughs> you know, generally speaking, when you're at a poker table with him, you're like, fuck, should I raise here? Because yeah. yeah. if I raise here, I probably have the best hand. But do I want to put the whole stack yeah. in? Also, every time, raise, like yeah. my entire stack is just at risk on every exactly. street, right. every pot. Right. Like, how yeah. is this happening? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think there's an edge there, whether sure. it's ring or heads up, whatever. Nick's yeah. a sicko. You, um, yeah, you got to be careful. But that's like kind of what I'm talking about. Where like, I think that that he'll have the edge in like the really big spots. And so it's hard to quantify edge, right? Like, yeah. like maybe in the smaller pots, like Berkey is like a little bit more He's experienced. Almost definitely so more well studied. He'll like have those little small edges, but then like in the big pots, like Nick is gonna be able to have bluffs. Nick yeah. is gonna like yeah, I agree. be able to like stick it on you. I agree. Like Berkey's gonna be scared to like make really big bets because yeah. he doesn't want to get jammed on. Like these things, I think will. Yeah. At, even at the beginning would push it slightly. Matt's going to love favorite. this one. Let's just so, say a poker intelligence. <laughs> I bet you if you gave them a 10 page <laughs> test on ranges and whatever else, Matt would slaughter Nick because Nick hasn't studied like that. So yeah. Matt, you think anyone's you paying them to, uh, to take these poker intelligent tests? You what? Do you think anyone's paying them to take these poker intelligence tests? How do you even put together one of those tests? It was like, just like, that was kind of a fantasy. Yeah, thing. I mean, just the thought where it's like, yeah, maybe like Matt slaughters Nick at that, but then also like, 
Maybe. Crazy idea, but I think it's possible that Nick makes more money in poker in the long run, despite being a worse poker player. I could see that. So uh, to speak. Yeah. I'll that's, go as far as to yeah. say, though, I'm not even sure he's he is the worst poker player. Well, that's the thing. Like, worse, better. Like, it's just in They're poker, it's very hard to qualify. Well, listen, I don't know how much money Nick has. Yeah. I don't know. I don't either. He, I don't know what he made in investment banking. I don't know what if a family gave him anything. I don't know. And yeah. I really don't give a shit. But I know this. I know this personally from off stream, on stream, and being around really close. I know Nick has made at least a couple few million dollars playing poker in the last year. I know really? that. Really? Yes. Oh. I know that. Now, how deep he is after that, I don't know. And it's like anything else. You know, you can make fun. You can make fun of Nick when he first like this is how look at look at guys like Mariano. Like, you know, not too long ago, he's playing 510. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then he moved up a little bit. I can remember not so long ago that Mariano was playing in hands that were like $100,000 pots that his ass was fucking puckered because it was yeah. a huge pot for him. Now yeah. he's playing pots like that every day. It's it's not just because you're winning and you can play higher. It's because you get more, you you, you, you get, what's it called? More comfortable. Comfortable yeah. going up and being in these spots. So I can remember yeah. playing, you know, with Nick during COVID. Yeah, he was playing at this level. And then when we would play the anti-game, he was buying in for 30,000 and he would be on fucking monkey tilt if he lost 40,000 and he was stuck. I remember that. Yeah. You know, and but but as you start getting into it and playing higher and taking these swings, you just get like custom to doing it now. So you have to take that into consideration and not just say, oh, Nick folded kings and made a joke <laughs> about uh, uh, selling his watch if he lost his pot. Yeah. We know that's tongue in cheek. Yeah. But the band of hyenas over there, you know, are just, just putting a stake in the ground saying, oh, you know, he he meant it about his watch. He's He was <laughs> broke then. That's yeah. bullshit. And that's just this type of stuff that they say and do that's just not right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I completely. I mean, agree. I think a lot of it is also like over time, like he's gotten more into that, like, I'm going to cover everyone. I'm going to play Big Pot's image. Like, it's exactly what you said. Like, those things take time to build, but like you can build them in like a few months. Like, yeah. if you just like buy in deeper, like put yourself out of your comfort zone and then you get comfortable there. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I think that's like a big thing that people miss when they, they for sure are like oh he like has to, someone has to be backing him like 100 percent because like no way someone like this is this crazy like yeah, yeah. The, the one thing i know about nick is like he always plays his own money especially on stream like yeah. he never has sold any action yeah. and i can tell yeah. you if you look back from day one of the hustler and you and i can and i'm not gonna but i can name yeah. like five players that i think off the top of my head that were playing like this were bankrolling you would think they look their bankroll this this is how they were buying in whatever and yeah. now if you look our games are like two three x they're sick and these same guys are playing pots triple the size they were at the beginning and they're just comfortable because they work their way to that resistance to yeah. be able to like handle yeah. it and like what did did every one of those people have their parents leave them something like, <laughs> I, I will say this yeah to, to both what both of y'all's points like yeah. if someone's moved up the stakes in poker and it's not immediately obvious where their money is from i might just guess that it's from poker yeah yeah uh, and who cares anyways yeah and yeah, then, right. Like another point is like, for example, like my my dad, like if he played poker, like he could lose like a few hundred dollars and he'd be like, wow, I lost so much money. But he, like he has more money than me. So like it's, it's yeah, like a it's, perfect it's, example. It's just... Like some people like it's not about their net worth. It's about what they're comfortable with losing, what they've lost no. before. Like to him, like he's never lost a hundred dollars at poker. So losing a few hundred dollars to him would feel really bad to him. I'll give you another perfect example. Yeah, I have some cake. I don't play like Nick Arable. I'm I'm retired. Yeah. Every time you say cake, do you mean dollars? Yeah, because that's what that's what what Berkey and his uh, hyenas said. I I think for uh, what's this other guy Andre who I just think is the biggest dork ever, and I don't care. I'm leaning in now. I'm done. Do it. Okay. Go. And Love so that. you know he when they were doing the the kill fuck marry thing, he was like, <laughs> oh you should marry you know Doug because he has money whatever, and then he goes, well I, you know I don't know Berkey goes I don't know Nick probably has a lot of cake from that like his real estate investing in different things, and so I got the We're I didn't even know what cake, I didn't even know what cake meant <laughs> until someone sent me the video of him bashing me, <laughs> um, an ass. but so. my point is is I don't play my bankroll. Right. Yeah. Because I don't want to. Exactly. I don't want those swings. I like what I'm doing, and so you can't assume anyone is by how high they're playing or how low they're playing. It's just like your analogy of your dad. Yeah. It's like whatever people feel like doing it or are comfortable with, that's what they do. And and I will be honest, the great, great poker players are the ones that have either have that chip or don't have the chip that are willing to go broke. Yeah. 
that are willing to put it all on the line and and be like that. And there are some people that don't have that chip. I don't. Yeah. I, I'll be the first to admit it. That's some yeah. of the great poker players. All, some of the other great poker players are ones who just work their ass off and who've yes. managed their bankroll perfectly. That, yes, that are very smart in yeah. their business. Yes, I agree. Um, I agree. It's both. So I guess I also want to ask you, where a few sessions in, how does Nick feel about his performance? So it's definitely been up and down. Like, um, I know, like, when he goes on these spaces and stuff, he's like, I was never sweating. I was always going <laughs> to win. Like, I'm the greatest. But, like, Mr. Promoter. when he was down 500K, like, he was in a lot of emotional pain for sure. Like, he, he was like, There's a lot on the line. Yeah. And, like, he was hurting. Like, he's a lot, he was losing a lot of big pots. He felt like he was running very bad. So like, he's human. Yeah, exactly. He's human. Like, these things are, are difficult to deal with in the moment. How relieved is he to be for basically sure. even now? Yeah. I mean, 33K. He's like, uh, now he's back on. I mean, like, he I'm has to feel like greatest. he's winning. Like, he yeah. was. He basically just made 400k. Like he came back from the dead. That yeah, could be yeah. you, anything. Could happen in yeah. in this match, but yeah. that could be the momentum the other yeah. way. Yeah. We'll just have to I wait mean, and see. Yeah, that's what that's what we're thinking. That's what we're hoping for, obviously. But like, no one knows. You don't like, know. Yeah, you know. You I will say, know. if I have to like bet on someone to come back from being stuck half a million, I'm liking Nick's <laughs> side a whole lot more than I yeah. like Berkey's side. Well, yeah. I yeah, always but, make yeah. this joke with him. I'm like, you're a Pokemon that injures itself to get stronger, and then you come <laughs> back and like always win because like whatever he plays, like it's very common. It's a very common. Oh, it's theme absurd. That, yeah, that he just like he'll loses just be down 100 straight, 200k, 200 straight, and then he comes back. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he'll be down so much. Yeah. Like he'll be down like half of the money at the table, and then he'll just come straight yeah. back. And I'm just like, yeah. what in the world just happened? <laughs> what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. actually pretty so, insane. I mean, that's something that I think is pretty unique to him. Um, yeah. what do you think his goals are, both like regarding this challenge, and then maybe also outside of poker with like the content we're doing? Yeah, I mean, right now, like we're the goal is just to like become some of the biggest names in poker. Like yeah, that's all it is. Like, that. I think he's doing pretty good at that. Like he's killing the, it. The other thing that like you guys glazed upon like that Berkey and them were doing is like they were trying to like create drama for clicks. I think that that's something that Nick does naturally is, like yeah. <laughs> happen. It just like happens like all the time. Like like Doug releases a video about like Berkey and Airball like standing and like almost kissing each other, and it gets like <laughs> ten times as many views as like anything else he's ever released. It's like sick movie. Th this is just like what people like fiend yeah. on. Like they they like want the clicks, they want the drama, they want the like For everything. Sure. And how so, do, how do you personally feel about the drama? Uh, I mean, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't think it's like I think bad or, the drama adds fun yeah to the match yeah and i also think why in the hell could we not have seen this match yeah that would have been so fun i well, disagree with like yeah. oh this is so much better not knowing no bullshit i would yeah. love to see the demeanor and uh, who's ignoring who and like that's <laughs> you know that's one yeah. of the reasons even like hustler casino live is popular because it's poker but there's yeah. a lot of rivalries and bullshit and yeah. who you like, who you don't. And so people watching um, enjoy that. Exactly. I think they would have they would have broke the internet with this. And I think I heard, and if I'm wrong, apologize. I think I heard Matt or somebody say, it might not have been Matt, like why let the streamer houses um, make the money on me or something like that. And mm -hmm. I don't know who said that. But, you know, something like this, whatever money was made off of it on YouTube or anything else could have been given to them. Yeah, I mean, could have made was, a deal. Didn't have to make profit off it. To, there to, were to some stream talks, it. like with some uh, organizations. I don't really want to specify who because yeah. I haven't got the go ahead. But there were some talks, and Berkey initially said he was open to it. So like those things are hmm. potentially in the works. Good. There's just haven't been good much developments on them. So um, yeah. obviously, other viewers are enjoying the drama. Yeah. Bit the fanfare it's all great and fantastic um how out of line do we feel like nick has been because i personally <laughs> nick is always out of line like, i'm not gonna sit line. here and defend somebody like i like nick because i know deep down he's a good yeah. person and i i talk to him off like promoting and marketing mode and but like i mean come on what did he say like go suck, suck a, a dick, dick for a yeah. yeah yeah it's oh my god yeah. i hope, hope you sucked, sucked it good, good. bitch <laughs> <laughs> i mean well, that wasn't oh, a yeah. private text though right that was the, yeah the but text yeah so whatever if you want to but like publicly with golf on them yeah it's just yeah. aggro to say <laughs> yeah i just it's just too much and you know that's what he's going for and that's why yeah. people know who he is and a lot of people hate him but yeah. People who hate you watch more than the people that don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, He's just sure. like inflammatory because like then people watch because then they want to watch him lose. Like yeah, everyone of course. like loves to hate. That builds him. a brand exactly. if you're looking to do yeah. that. It's yeah. like a villain. 
How yeah. do you guys feel about people hating you? I don't care. Some people hate me. What about Some you? Some people love me. Truth? Yeah. I don't like it. I don't like it either. Yeah, I'm right. sensitive. I, mm. I... I I keep getting in these like quitter spats, which I'm now actually done. Um, in fact, I'll do a hundred dollar giveaway every time I get into like a Twitter spat. One off comments do not count, um, especially <laughs> also non random. An occasional don't count. Scud missile is, doesn't count. <laughs> Nick is gonna be like, time to take Will's bankroll on Twitter. Here come the needles. <laughs> People I know don't count because I actually like care about them. I actually talk to them. Whatever. Okay. Um, but I just like found that it caused me to be like deeply anxious. Like I felt. Really <laughs> really bad Me after too. it's mm. not good okay let's talk mm. about that yeah. i am so guilty of putting myself in that position i did not when i came in this industry i didn't know how mean and vile some people yeah. could be i yeah. did i wasn't expecting that yeah. i never had experienced that yeah. so when i started experiencing i was like I'm fighting back. I'm throwing uppercuts. <laughs> I'm fucking like, come on. Oh, you're behind me. Let's go. And then what I realized is I'm fucked because I can't compete with a keyboard. Yeah. Everything I would do something, they would like do 10 other things and then just not leave me alone. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, yeah. this strategy is really bad. And I would walk around like you so anxious and pissed yeah. off and like taking it out on other people. Yeah. So I will say now I'm doing everything everything i can we to do should what you're have doing a with. bet or let's, something not even a bet yeah. let's just have like a, a hotline yeah. anytime yeah. i'm ready to like be on a sleep chocolate and fire off a missile <laughs> like i need to have like lynn buzzed the twitter hotline yeah because it's not worth it so now and everyone will say oh this is so bad whatever yeah. now i see it yeah. i may once in a while make one comment but if i don't i just snap block because I don't want it. And then people will yeah. say, oh, you block because you can't. No, no, I block because I fucking hate you. you yeah, that's fair. <laughs> well, also, you're yeah. just protecting your energy. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I will say is sometimes I like to go on this, like, a time intensive endeavor <laughs> where someone says something really mean and I try to respond with as much empathy as possible so that we can mm. actually have some dialogue. Is yeah. it a complete waste of time? Potentially, but does it actually work like most of the time? Yes. Mm. Do I want to mm. teach people on Twitter that like you get access <laughs> to my time and energy by being addicted? To me? Exactly. Probably not. Snap yeah. block. And by the way, I just had my social media yeah. guy send me a bunch of. I'll send them to you guys a bunch of Twitter stuff to make your account better, worse, have more views, whatever. And getting blocked on a regular basis if you are that person really messes up your account. So if you're getting blocked on a regular basis, it's a negative EV on uh on your account and if you get a, a lot of your comments striked or uh complained about like misinformation that also kills your account and eventually your account will be closed hmm. and there was i'm not going to name who because i don't want them coming after me but there was someone recently who's out there that is just going after everybody and i and i see this guy going after all these people and then i saw his original account is suspended and blocked and now mm -hmm. he has to have another one because and then he went right back at it yeah so <laughs> he didn't like that's just his thing you know yeah yeah. Oh. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. I mean, social media, I'll just say, like, can definitely affect your mental health. Yeah. You got to be able to keep it in check. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. 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 I, re I really like that. I don't even know why um, I look at it. I, I, I do like the other saying. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't remember who it was, but someone was just like, oh, like, I, maybe it was Kanye or something, but that, like, social media or, like, online bullying isn't real. Just put your phone down. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's true, hard to right? Do. It's hard to do. It's hard to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's hard to do. Yeah. 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 You see that notifi those notifications, you're like, God, oh, I did something that I will say I think is so fucking smart. Okay, so yeah. right now I don't get any notifications from people I don't follow. It's the nuts. Okay. Like, so mm. how do you do all that? Of, well, so because here's the thing, right? It's not the people I follow, like fucking Trolling Lex you. Friedman or whatever. It's not like a shit yeah. posting or whatever. One like day. Elon Musk is not over here <laughs> typing like rants at me. So, yeah. um, yeah, no, you just go to your settings and mm. you just mute all the notifications from all the fucking randos oh that like, realistically don't matter to your life anyways. Makes yeah. Twitter a much it. better place I to be. I love it. I yeah. love yeah. it. But I swear, I look and if it is just a dick comment, block. That's great. That's I just reasonable. have to, I just block and move on. Yeah, that's you know, because I, I don't want to so see bad. another one. I don't want them to see my shit. It's just like leave me alone. Yeah. We must not. We must not. We're never going to be yeah. friends. I guess. Yeah. I, I would have been. Yeah. If you weren't a dick. <laughs> I would have been. So if you said hi, I would have said hi back. I'd be your friend. Yeah. So. Yeah. I. 
on that note, I will also say this. Like, if someone slides into my DMs for asking me for advice, I almost always give them five minutes of time. And I'm just like, hey, like, here's my number. Call me. Um, you better be someone, careful with that, bro. Uh, it's worked really well for me. I'm going to okay. keep going Lynn with this. All right, all right, all right. Randos. Lynn loves the randos. Because these are people. Who like- <laughs> Let's do a podcast on that. Lynn, Lynn loves the randos. <laughs> loves the randos. I mean, we should go through the fucking Bitcoin Let's read some story. of them. The Bitcoin billionaire story is fucking gold. I just believe in people, okay? I'm perhaps a touch naive and a touch idealistic. But leave me alone. Also, it's like never hurt. like I just for better or for worse, it's I've never gotten hurt like being kind to strangers. So I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. You're right. Thank you okay. very no, much. No, if someone's um, kind to you or just asking you a question, yeah. for sure. You, I was just talking about the numbers. Yeah. Your number. Um yeah, and I've noticed too, I've had some people like especially a couple months back really come after me. Like they would just DM me the nastiest shit about yeah. like the scandal and different things. And the ones that I actually took the time to say, do you want to talk? Do you want to hear who I am? If you want to call me a real estate scammer, if you want to do this, um, do you want to actually know that right. I had 450,000 people a year come through my free events and thousands of people over the six right. years and I got 10 or 15 cry babies on the Better Business Bureau right. that just like say nasty shit and now that's me. That's why I defend Matt when people yeah. say things about him yeah. because it hits home for me yeah. and it's nonsense. And, you know, even yeah. Matt has up that little meme that was from like eight years ago about yeah. successful people break the rules. Like, that's bullshit. <laughs> you, you, everyone knows if you read that what that means. That doesn't mean you're a cheater or a liar. It just means that like yeah. successful people are going to go outside of the box to be successful. Yeah. It's just a, yeah. a saying. And so can you move out of the way a little bit? Because I've had this for six months <laughs> and, and, and I didn't yeah. put it up because I was doing the passive aggressive, leaning in, leaning out. I'm fucking leaning in. There you go. Okay. Even unsuccessful people break the rules too. Okay. Let's go. We're, let's go back. Um, I, I do want to say this. I want to just take a second and quickly steal man. Uh, what does that mean? Yeah. yeah. That means. Okay. So steal manning just means, so when you straw man an argument, you're basically turning whatever they just said and you are misconstruing the words yeah. so that it so means that's nothing. What that's what I meant by what he did. By straw man. Um, when he, like, let's say you make an argument and he like he completely misquotes your he, argument and then yeah. rips it to shreds. Totally, like, he's just turned your argument into paper by steel manning. It's the exact opposite. Oh, so I'm basically talking Ber- like Berkey's product up, but it's also because I actually like, believe this. Um, I'm gonna go on my rant for two yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah, so, it. yeah, is 4K a high price to pay for a product? Yes. Are there a lot of people running academies? No. Are most of the people who come through his like training camp amateurs? who probably lose a fair bit of money, yes. Like, do they get their money back if he just improves them at all because they're probably dumping at least five figures a year? Yes. Are they almost definitely getting the value they're paying for as well as, like, building relationships with the people around them, including the coaches? Also, yes. Like, do I think he actually has a product that is worth paying for by at least some people, largely the demographic he's marketing to? Yes. I don't think he's a scammer. I don't think he's yeah, a I fraud. Agree with you. I don't think his product so is immensely fair. profitable, but I do well, think it is a good product for some I'm, people. I'm pretty sure it's not. But that's, <laughs> I, I am. I'm good at business, and I know and hear a lot of things. But but who cares? And I will go a step further. Um, I don't think four thousand is a lot. Yeah. Um, and I also think that Matt could give a hundred people that four thousand dollar product, and maybe one to fifteen will be really successful, and maybe you know like. A little more than that will be kind of successful because it comes down to the the people that you give it to. Like if like 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 yeah. I said, if someone doesn't know what they're doing and you can teach them ranges, you could teach them this mm-hmm. how to play post flop. Like that that's worth four thousand. Like yeah. that on its on its own. Like if they're if they can't get it anywhere. And I used to tell my students this right from the stage. I used to say it. There's five hundred at one point my max. There's five hundred people in here. I promise you. I I have it on video. I could post it. Not all of you are going to be successful at this. And they paid a shit ton of money. 4000 was just nothing compared to what I trained, mm-hmm. uh, what I uh, uh, charged these people for the training because it would be weeks of training and boot camps. And so it was a lot different than that. Right. And I would say, if I took 10 of you and I gave you the same information, just like if you went to college and you all had the same professors, the same degree, and those guys or gals come out of college, maybe one or two are very successful. Maybe three or four are 
fairly successful, and then the rest don't do shit with their degree, or they don't become anything. Is it because the professors didn't give the same information to you as they did the person who was successful? No. And they spent, does anyone go back to and ask the, the universities for the money back or bash them? No, because that's, we're accustomed to paying for education. What Matt's doing, there's nothing wrong with it. He's charging for his knowledge, and not everyone is going to be successful, just like in my real estate training, just like in college. And so people that don't understand that or don't have that, they don't have a business mind or they don't understand how success is really derived. Also, I could be wrong, but I don't think Matt's like advertising that he's going to turn like amateurs into professional poker players. No. Honestly, if they just lose like $4,000 less over like the next like it's worth few it. years or whatever, it is worth it for them. And yeah. I suspect they're doing that. On top of that, even if somehow they have not learned a thing and they've just enjoyed four thousand dollars worth of entertainment over three days, for like, sure. Yeah. I pay one fifty an hour for entertainment all the time. Like, yeah. I think Matt should be left alone yeah. about his business. I agree. I agree. Like, just totally left alone. Yeah, it's not I fair. Agree. Yeah, I, I I absolutely agree yeah. with that. I, and also I don't like him. Think it's a good, but I, no, I, no, that's how I feel. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah. With you. I think Nick's point on that is like really sharp. It's not really something that I thought about before, but I think that like it definitely like the person that's like trying to get better is what it's going to come down to in how much they get better. Think yeah. about this. More when, than the, what they buy. Of when, course. When yeah. I had my technology business and I had to shut it down because the dot-com crash happened and then the year later we had uh, 9-11. We went in through like a massive double dip recession and my business tanked, okay? I got mm -hmm. invited to a real estate class, a three-day class that some guy who was losing his business uh, paid $6,000 for and he could bring somebody as a guest I went as the guest. I almost didn't go because I didn't want to waste the week. I was so miserable from what was right. happening, right? But I went. Yeah. Now, I wound up spending that money I, at the time, didn't really, shouldn't have been spending like sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 on really extended education and real estate training. Guess what? The guy that I went through with who spent the same amount of money never did one piece of real estate. I went on to do millions of dollars in real estate. I went on to create a cash flow system of selling properties for cap rate and made a huge living out of it. Yeah. And, and that's because I decided to go invest in myself, pay for the training, and I promise you only a few percentage of the people that went through that did that. And yeah. some had some success. Maybe they just got their money back only and did one deal. You can't, like, that's what I'm saying. Like you, you can't judge, uh, you can't judge Matt's curriculum. You can't judge who's successful and who's not, because yeah. somebody's going to take his information and be successful with it. Yeah. The, yeah. the other thing is, uh, from what I've seen, it doesn't seem like it's like past customers or clients that are like complaining, like, "Oh, Matt made a horrible product." No, it's just people me. judging him. Yeah, yeah, it's it's outside people who that haven't, haven't like, even done the. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's why I defend him <laughs> yeah, in this because that's sure. happened yeah. to me, yeah. and that's bullshit. And I can yeah. see why yeah. he gets really upset with that because if yeah. he is putting his heart and soul into yeah. that teaching yeah. and giving them everything he got, that's a huge insult. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's fair too. Like, that's what I told Nick also. Like, when he was talking about this stuff, like, yeah. And Nick like, Airball can be yeah. so out of line. I was like trying to tell that's him, like, line. someone's not a fraud just because they create a business. Like, if people buy the business, like, they buy it. Yeah. Like, it's it's just an opinion if you think it's like overpriced. Now, or if not he worth took the it. money, he didn't give him the training, he yeah. took the money, yeah. he didn't give him what he said, then you yeah. can use words like that. Yeah. 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 And he yeah. would, and I don't think he'd ever do that yeah. because I know he probably stands on his principles and integrity, and I yeah. and I believe that. Um, I don't yeah. have any more questions for you guys, and I also think this would be a really good point to end off on. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, um, I think just I like that we've kind of tied it together. Where yeah, like can he be pompous? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But is he a bad actor in the business that he owns? Absolutely not. Agreed. Agreed. Um, I think, in my opinion, the biggest flaw that Matt has is we've already touched on, and I think he makes way more enemies than than he should. Or <laughs> I, I just do. I, I just I just don't get it. And um, if that works for him, hey, fine. I have one last fun exercise. F fun exercise. Since you said that, yeah, we don't have to do this. We can cut this out. What do we each think our own biggest flaws are? Oh, I, I, I'll lean into that shit. Okay. <laughs> okay, but you go first. Um, sure, I'll go first. My <laughs> biggest flaw. I've a ton. Biggest um, or your flaws? Because well, I have I have more than one. Oh, you have more than one. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. um, I think I probably yeah. have two biggest ones. One, I'm 
uh, maybe they're the same thing. I'm like very impulsive and I'm not good about putting in hard work mm. for many reasons. Um, the impulsivity obviously really hurts me because I just spaz off saying like fairly reckless things that while like perhaps are true are very unkind that I regret later on. Sure. It doesn't feel good. What about you? Um, I mean, I used to be very much like that. I think my biggest weakness is definitely my laugh. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think it's so annoying. First time with me, I like beg him to play me heads up for like six hours, and I just have to deal with this stupid fucking chuckle the entire time because I'm stuck infinite. It was so stupid. I mean, I, I think my my real biggest weakness is uh, probably saying things without uh, like saying what I think like straight up, even if it'll like offend someone or hurt someone's feelings, like. A lot of times, like, I'll just be, like... I'll just Ishan tore things. his girlfriend to shreds <laughs> over, a, like, code names. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he just, like, ripped her yeah, a new uh, one. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. like, sometimes I can just, like, go off and be, like, uh, that and, like, don't <laughs> restrain myself or, like, filter. I think that's probably one of my biggest weaknesses. Yeah. yeah. It's probably also oftentimes your biggest strength. Like, I was just complimenting yeah. you on it beforehand. I think Ishan's, like, very good at, like believing that as long as he communicates his thoughts he can move the needle with the other person whereas like i tend to give up a lot faster and totally yeah I really yeah, yeah. <clears throat> i mine are mine's simple I, i'm gonna narrow it down to a couple um because i could probably go on a long <laughs> time too. with my flaws um <clears throat> my biggest flaw is and i've confirmed this in the last two years is that i make emotional statements and decisions when i'm in an emotional state that after i like my the, the the red comes out of my eyes and ears yeah. and everything calms down. Yeah, I think I didn't want to say that. That's not optimal. Yeah. I yeah. maybe didn't even mean that. You know, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. And then part of that same flaw would be walking it back. Like although I'll always admit when I'm wrong or whatever, but that has just come across as wishy washy. And that's mm. why today I have chosen. If I feel this and I feel it's true. I am going to say what I want to say yeah. and I'm not going to react emotionally. I'm going to try not to. And then the other flaw, believe it or not, is that I'm sometimes loyal to a fault where I've been hurt in relationships because I've given the benefit of the doubt too many times. I've forgiven too many times and I've stayed loyal to a few, even some business relationships that wound <clears throat> up backfiring on me hard. And so it's, it's my nature. So I have to be conscious of it. I can, I can definitely relate to that. I'll say two things I've done. One is like, whenever I have a problem with someone or something, instead of being like, Oh, like I can deal with this. I just like discuss it with them directly and immediately yeah, yeah. where I don't give them the chance to make the same mistake before I've like gotten m my chance to let them know like, Hey, like I don't like this. Maybe we can do something different. Well, Lynn, the perfect example for me today is mm -hmm. uh, I wrote up a bunch of no uh, notes in my last two pages <laughs> and um, they're have them in right there. here. Wow. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and when I wrote them up, I was steamed Uh huh. and yeah. they are notes. I'm not going to read them. They are facts that I've been sitting on about Matt uh, and only business, nothing, nothing personal. Right. Um, yeah, uh, uh, about some of the stuff he's done in the streaming industry and his attempts at it, right. where I literally have two pages full of facts of how somebody could be hitting other people when I know all this. And today, the only reason I'm even saying it is because we're talking about flaws. For I wasn't sure. going to bring it up, right. um, but I chose not to do it right. because right. then if I did it, I don't know how it felt about it. And then I'm stooping to his level. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, if I ever need to, and it gets to that point, I will. And it won't matter. It's nothing bad. He didn't do anything wrong or no lack of integrity, nothing. It's just um, like, how do you, how do you, yeah. I, I don't know, get on a soapbox and talk about something when, when yeah. you haven't been able to do it yourself? It comes off at, at bare minimum, bare minimum hypocritical yes um i can attest that nick definitely let out a rant before this um but not everything needs to be aired out publicly yeah. and then i have one more comment which is just that like i don't think walking it back after is a flaw i think that's almost definitely it's how strength. i walk it back mm, mm. maybe maybe, yeah. maybe it's, it's how, how i walk maybe. it back like i walked back i don't want to talk about it but i yeah. recently put my foot in my mouth of something i absolutely didn't mean the way yeah. and they, i got a lot of heat for it and um I put the apology out watered down and I put the uh, walk back watered down. Yeah. And what I should have said was the truth and which was 
mm, 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 yeah. fucking like it or don't. For sure, for yeah. sure. And, and I would have had a lot less heat, but I was so worried about like who yeah. this person would think this. Maybe I should say right. that. Fuck that. Yeah. I'm not yeah. doing that anymore. Yeah, I'm yeah. not. I'm going to hopefully take a minute, yeah. think of what I want to do, say, or post. Hopefully, I probably yeah. will fail. I probably will. And then if I do have to say something, I should just say, I was wrong. Yeah. I didn't mean this because I meant that. That's it. Fuck you. <laughs> well, maybe that's it. I'm sorry, but sure. See, I just did it again. I just did it again. I got emotional and I said, fuck you. See? Uh, no, I got... See, I, 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 I lasted 30 seconds. Well, so, no pun. Yeah. So, I, I honestly used to be like that a lot also, where like I would just like get frustrated or angry and say things like that I didn't mean. And then like it would just fuck everything up after. And like one thing that helped me was just like trying to like communicate those like strong emotions in like a better way in the yeah, moment. Yeah, like, rather than reacting do. with those emotions, just communicating, hey, I have these emotions. Yeah. Totally. I'm also trying to learn like, how to start. Like if instead of saying like, hey, you're an idiot for saying that, you could say like, hey, I feel angry well, or I feel hurt. Yeah, you, or, yeah, exactly. You could be like, hey, like, what you said like should triggered, we all put our hands on our chest because, and like, pretend like we're on the view <laughs> well it's just like how you say it. like you can still say that they're an idiot at the end but if you say like hey yeah, like i think you should if you think so yeah that, hey like this is i'm gonna yeah. say something emotionally charged because i feel hurt by what you just said yeah. like there, there's and a good chance say, i'm not gonna then people this. will be like okay i can see where he's coming from because like he yeah. just told me like how that triggered him first. totally yeah. Yeah. yeah it's hard to do it's us as humans have the yeah. the two when we have fear whether it's physical fear or social fear or yeah. whatever it's fight or flight exactly or freeze I go right, or yeah, yeah I go right to fight yeah me too I, before I even put any and that's even in person like you, yeah. you whatever whatever I'm like let's fucking go you know and yeah. and yeah. that's not the right thing and it's the same yeah. thing on social media yeah. it's like if you just have that button you are going yeah. to take heat and I own that yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. one thing I try to do is not see those things as assaults as much yeah. Like, yeah, if well, you just I, see them as like, I have blocked 80 million people, so I think I'm safe. So. <laughs> yeah, that's fair too. But there's always more trolls. You can't block them you all. Can't. Yeah, block them. They're all, all going to be I'm so there. afraid to even to say something. I put up a post that said, I put up, listen, I put up a post yesterday. And there's new ones me. being born every day. All it said the trolls was, are having troll kids. <laughs> I put up a post that all it said was pick your friends, like something paraphrasing of people that will fight for you if you're not in the same room with them. It's something yeah. like yeah, that. Like, sure. you know, people yeah. that will defend you when you're not there yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and even that got trolls well, no one will have to defend you if you weren't such a scumbag <laughs> no one would have to defend you if you didn't rip everyone off in real estate and it's like motherfucker can i put something up nice and just yeah. like really helpful yeah, it's crazy that the, the people who yeah. like respond positively to it don't respond and everyone who has something <laughs> shitty to say everybody that. that has something shitty to say yeah. is has a lot of time I'm on their hands. twitter i'm done i'm out yeah. of here it's because people yeah people right. just don't like feel like saying something positive but then yeah. if they have a negative emotion they have to get okay. it out in all right in closing yeah. real quick when will they be playing again what are our thoughts on if they will be uh streaming or playing private mm -hmm. and when does this end uh so they're supposed to play four weeks um this week is off next weekend they're gonna play one day just saturday okay because berkey has the academy and okay. then they'll be on for three three weekend three days every weekend for the next like is there three, an end to this after that yeah so they're scheduled to play a hundred hours I think as uh, however they break it down in days it'll happen do they stop hours. at hundred hours no matter what yeah. they wherever can. you wherever they you can land they yeah. Can, yeah. either if one person wants to yeah. I'm sure someone will stop either a million dollar stop loss or a hundred hours okay got it yeah. fair um yeah uh just I have a product I quickly need a shill please go to hello it's Lynn. Uh, and DM me if you want action on Berkey. Obviously, the lines are going to move, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to want a little bit more action on Nick. So cool. we'll probably take up to like 30 or 50K. Hello, it's Lynn on Twitter and Instagram. Good job, Lynn. And I now <laughs> that go. you remind me of shilling, I do this every time. Just put this wherever you want, okay? Not, <laughs> you're not figuratively. Uh, <laughs> or I mean, figuratively. <laughs> not literally, I mean. Um, so I want to do a shout out to my sponsor, Only Poker. It is the one-stop shop for a poker app. It is totally free. You are dumb if you don't go at least download it for free. And uh, it is really cool. And I actually really like it, not just because they're paying me they to do? say that. 
Uh, it's a it's a one stop poker app. It's you go there. Okay, good. I'm telling somebody yeah. that doesn't know. Uh, it, okay, so first of all, it has all the gossip of, of poker, right? Nice. Uh, it does. <laughs> it has all the news. Love that. Um, strategy. That's amazing. Has where all the games are in different hotels and casinos, and you can also have the ability to drop your own game into that where you're setting your limits and whatever, and people can message you so you could drop a game, let's say at Aria. And and say I want to do it whatever who's in. This is an amazing way oh, to organize poker right. games. And yeah, yeah. And so there's and then there's something they call circles. And basically that is groups. You can create as many groups if you want private of who you want in it. So if you want to promote your business and you just want people in there that are going to help you with your business, or you want to just talk about strategy, you could do a strategy whatever. You can make these groups and pick who leads and who is in them and whatever. So it's like a really cool all in one deal. I really like it. And the company that I'm telling you that I've been working with this company now with so many they have so many other different brands and stuff and they're amazing people and so uh i've been blessed to have them um uh, sponsoring the show and all that kind of stuff so go to only poker download the app it's free and something i forget to do every time we need more subs here okay i have sometimes videos 30 40 000 people watching and you know the subs are at 15k if you like this show sub it Sub yeah. it. It helps. It really me stay. helps. It's helped so much for me to stay doing this because it's a passion project, but it really does help. Yeah. So just take that second and like and sub the show. Even if you don't like it and you hate me, sub it and watch and troll me in the comments. Yeah. Fair? Rip them apart. Fair. Fair. Yeah. Super fair. fair. Okay. Yeah, it's the cost of admission. Should we uh, close it out? Yeah. yeah okay. Sounds good. Uh, this is and was the Nick Fertucci show. I am Nick Fertucci, and for Brown Baller, Ishan, and Lynn, and the special guest, Chloe, <laughs> and be out. <laughs>